Well, it's time for update number six, I believe it is, of the High Def Nest project, and I'm getting pretty close now. I have completed a nice two, two and a half week redo of the software, so I have totally rewritten all of the software that runs it, and that includes a whole brand new menu system, all the interface stuff, and all that fun things, because I just kind of ran out of space, and the code was kind of ugly, so I just decided to throw it all out and totally redo it. So the menu looks similar to how it was, it works similar, but I've added a few new things, so I'll show some of that off. And now you can actually cycle the HDMI port and it will actually properly reinitialize it. You can select resolutions and the EDID is all working now so when you plug this in it will be able to detect what monitor you have and select the appropriate resolution. And so here I'll ghetto-fy this and hook, put the camera on the video over on the monitor there and I will uh, go through the menu because one I can't capture at 1080p but I want to also show all the little things it'll do like resolution switching and all that so let's go to that okay now to show off the new menu options here so go in the menu and so now I have under resolution it shows you what resolutions the monitor supports in this case this monitor supports all of these and then if you select a new resolution the little message pops up saying it's going to reboot it. So like if let's say I want to do 720 here. Now it's going to reboot and it's going to select that resolution. So we go in the menu, you know, start the game again, makes it easier. We go into the menu here and yep, 1280 by 720. and everything else works like it did before. So like the horizontal stretch works the same way. And I notice on this monitor here when you're in HDMI mode it acts different so it actually overscans in HDMI mode so you know it's no longer really centered and it seems to overscan. If I hit the button here it says 720p so now what I could do, if I go into settings here and turn DVI mode on, and it'll have to reboot, but all of a sudden the graphics will look sharper and brighter and it will not overscan anymore. Which is kind of strange. I don't, like I said, I'm not sure why it would change so drastically. And if you hit the button again, now it actually says, whoops, 1280 by 720 at 60 hertz. Now it's picture in picture, don't want that. There we go. Yeah, 1280 by 720 at 60 hertz. Let's start the game again. And it looks different too. But that's just the monitor. So now it's, obviously it's not over scanning anymore. So there's black borders on either side. Whoops, on either side of the screen there. Just did the overclock there. If I go in video options, horizontal stretch, so now if I stretch this out all the way, it'll it'll hit the edge, edges of the screen there, just like it should, which is exactly 5x. And if I go into position and slide this back to where it should be, like that, now the picture is perfectly centered on the screen in DVI mode, but you're not going to get any audio out of the monitor at this point. So fortunately most monitors have a what they call a pixel by pixel mode which will let you um, get rid of this overscan and still get audio but this particular monitor unfortunately does not have that setting so there's not a lot I can do but that's just based on the monitor but all this other stuff works like if you want to cut off some of the top, right side, bottom, and left side. If you want to cut any of that off for whatever reason, because a lot of emulators will cut off several of the top and bottom and some of the left and right. So if you want to do that, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. And then, of course, the, the scaling. A lot of people don't like it, but if you really want HQX or even X-ray mode, well, you can have that. So that's all working again. And then the scan line things works, is working pretty good again. Turn them on. Depends how deep you want it. So yeah, there's some scan lines there. I can zoom the camera in. 
and you can see the scan line effect, such as it is. Yeah, so the EDID is all working now, and like before, if I go into resolution, and the EDID is detected that this particular monitor supports all three of those resolutions, so we can select any of these, but let's say the monitor didn't support, say, 1080, and you select it anyway, what will happen is it will detect that the monitor can, say, do 720, and it will automatically select 720. It will not try to force 1080 because the monitor can't support it. So the other thing you can do is if you really, really, really want to want to force the issue, you can disable the EDID. So let's say you disable the EDID and the monitor can't support the resolution. Well, you know, normally you wouldn't be able to get back into the menu to fix it. However, what you can do is, as it says here, disabling the EDID will allow you to force blah, 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 blah. So what you do, you hold down select when you power cycle the system and it will force 480p, which all monitors have to support. So let's see, I'll save these settings as I have them. There, settings saved. So now what I'll do, get out of this, now I'm going to hold down select on the controller and I'm going to reset the system. There, system's reset, I'm holding down select. So theoretically we should be in 480p mode when it starts up again. It takes a little while because it actually um, goes through in there. Yeah, now we're in now we're in uh, 480p mode. So if I go back in the menu here, so now we're at 640 by 480. So that's how you get back if you happen to get into a resolution that your particular monitor doesn't like. Now the other thing I've done is all of these settings. All these settings actually are kind of sticky for each uh, monitor, or sorry, each resolution. So the width, let me set that back to where it was. So the width, the scan, the scaling, the scan lines, interpolation, the palette, cropping, and horizontal position. These are all s set per resolution, so you can have a different setting for all, all the resolutions. This supports six resolutions, three PAL, three NTSC, so normally you would have three sets of um, settings, one for each uh, resolution. And then the audio options, there's just, you know, these work like before, so you can you know, like turn each chip on and off. You got volume controls, and then the panning. So now I've added that, the number over there on the right, so you can see exactly how close to, say, center you are, 80 is center. So if you want like 25%, well you'd set this to like say 40, and so on and so forth. So they all default to center, so if you want to, so this is effectively mono, so if you want to force say the square wave to the left or the right, you can do that. The viewer doesn't work yet, but it should work eventually. I saved enough memory, so I should be able to do this viewer now. And then the settings just has the, the hot keys, and you can change the controller. So if you want controller one or two, and again the DVI mode, so this would turn off the audio when it's on, and this one is also goes per video mode. And then the EDID disables global, so if you turn this on, it totally disables EDID, and you can set any resolution that you want, whether your monitor supports it or not. And of course the audio clock, so if you're overclocking, and you want the audio pitch to stay the same, you can select uh, PPU and it will. And that's pretty much it. So I've redone this whole entire menu. I have done the EDID and I got all the bugs out of it. So the next thing I'm going to do, everybody want to copy nest, so I'm going to add that and then go from there. Got to do updates yet. So you can update this through the cartridge. And I think that's it. So that's where I am right now. The only thing I have left to do now is going to add copy nest. I know a lot of people wanted that, so I'm going to add a built-in copy nest, a USB copy nest actually. It'll be kind of a light version, but it should be able to do just about everything. The only thing it won't be able to do is single step code, but I don't think anybody's really using that. And the uh, current USB copy nest I don't think even supports that anyway. So you'll be able to do all the usual copy nest stuff other than that. 
and I was also going to add, you know, upgrading and then register viewer for audio. I think I can still add all that stuff. I'm almost out of resources now on the FPGA. I, it's 99% full right now. I got about oh, 150 logic elements left out of 10,000 and you know, I got about one and a half K of code space left after the refactoring. So I'm hoping I'm going to have enough room to do all this stuff. So we'll find out. Hopefully the next update video will be a little sooner than however long this took. But I was in a car wreck about a week and a half ago and I banged my leg up and it totaled my car. So I had to go through and get another car and all that. Well, yeah, that was a big pain in the ass. And then I've been working on this pretty much continuously for the last eh, two and a half weeks ever since that last update video. So, you know what I mean? It just takes some time to write the code. So now most of that's done. I just got to finish it out and make another circuit board which shouldn't take too long. And then I guess it's time to sell it. Thanks for watching.